Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about the call of Abraham. So in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Now, this month in June, we've been talking about our message for this month is walking in God's best. And we've been taking a look at some scriptures that have to do with walking, most of them coming from the original Hebrew language in the Old Testament. We talked about how David charged Solomon to walk in the ways of God. And we looked at how Solomon, it says, walked in the ways of God. He showed his love to God by walking in his ways. We talked earlier this month about he who walks with the wise will become wise. And it's interesting, in this verse here, in the call of Abraham, that word for go is the same exact word for walk in a lot of the instances in the Old Testament, in the original Hebrew language. That word for go, it means to go, it means to walk, it means to flow with, it means to follow or follow through. So you notice, what did what did God call Abraham to do? He called him to go, but he also called him to walk with him. Walk with me, Abraham. That's the call of Abraham. Go, walk with me. And that's our message for this month in June, walking in God's best. We're going to walk in his best by walking with him consistently. We're going to do life together with him. We're not doing life on our own. We're going to do life together with him. And notice, what did Abraham have to do? He had to go against the grain a little bit. He had to do things in a different way because he's walking with God now. And so we're going to take communion over this today. Asking God to... Help us to apply this into our lives, to understand this. It's interesting. You look in the New Testament. It says that we can walk in the footsteps of our father, Abraham. He's the father of our faith. We can walk in his footsteps, just like Abraham did. Let's get started with our daily prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening, their families, their friends, everybody connected to them and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down, he was smitten, bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed. Also that you could be on our side, that you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us and to make your face shine upon us. Let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So Father, I feel like just like you called Abraham. You said, go, come walk with me. Come follow after me. Jesus, you said that same thing to the disciples. Come follow me. Walk after me. Walk with me. I think we have that same call from you, Lord. And we just thank you for that that calling that you have in our life to come follow you, to go with you. And we're asking for you to help us to understand that and to just receive that call, to put it into action, to walk with you consistently. 
And we thank you the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, you laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, you've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by you, smitten by you. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in your sight. All through his one sacrifice. And you raised him up from the dead. And you seated him at your right hand. And you raised us up together with him and made us sit together with him. And we get this opportunity today to remember. To remember we've been made one with you through the sacrifice of Jesus. And so I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that released us from darkness and transferred us into the light. We get to have this new covenant with you, Father, this partnership with you. We get to walk with you. And so I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice. All right, so normally after our time of communion, we talk about some practical health and fitness tips because I think physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. Now, in our walk with God, we're going to have the ability to, to slow down and we got to have the ability to speed up. we got to have the brakes and we got to have the gas. You got to have both. Now, one of the ways we can practice that is in our physical exercise. We also need the same. We have to have the ability to slow our body down, to control the pace and the tempo and the movement, while at the same time having the ability to accelerate and move quickly. And one of the very simple ways that you can just begin to practice is you can develop both at the same time. Is that in your physical exercise, as you're doing a movement, let's say it's a squat or a push up or whatever it may be. Practice lowering down into the into the stretch position of the movement, the recovery portion of the movement. For example, in a push-up, it will be on the way down or a squat in the way down. You're going to pull actively into that. And you're going to go nice and controlled and slow. And then when you come up, you're going to accelerate. And then you're going to repeat that over and over again. Controlled, applying the brakes on the way down, accelerate on the way up. It's a great way to practice this. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about being a partner with us in our program, The Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.